those who can't be here for whatever reason, to just bless us and let us know that we are loved. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you most of all for the sacrificial death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we are justified by faith, Lord, but we thank you for his resurrection because we are here today because we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just say thank you because we love you, we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
this is right. This is what I see on my announcement. So, um, so I want to make sure everybody understands what's happening. If there are all the details we uncover, we will share them with you. Um, again, that is going to be in Emporia, by the way, in Emporia. Uh, so I want to make sure everyone understands that too. Other news to share with you, be encouraged to attend our weekly Bible study experience uh, via Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m., every Wednesday at 7 p.m., and of course our Sunday school experience at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom or in person. And then always, finally, be in prayer for every person that is sick and recovering at home during this time. Uh, we believe and strongly believe that effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Be in prayer for people. Amen. I need prayer. And I believe we all need prayer. Amen. No one is exempt from that at all. So definitely lift somebody up in prayer. Um, that's all I believe I have uh, at this particular time. A lot, again, is happening. I will give a quick shout out because uh, it's less than a month away. Our deacon, deaconess, and trustee day on Sunday, June the 2nd at 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. right there in your bulletin. So please be supportive of our deacons and deaconess and trustees here at the Abner Baptist Church. I didn't do this earlier, amen, but I, I want to um, draw attention to it just in case I missed you. If this is your first time being here at Abner. Could you stand, rise to your feet so we can recognize your presence today? Amen. Amen. We see you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus, the one who continues to bless us. I can see he's blessed you too. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Don't make this the last time. Next time, you all family. Amen. You know, I'm just saying, I'm a part of the church too. Amen. I'm not just visiting. Amen. So we just thank you so much for being here on today. That's all I want to share at this time, but I want to ask you a question. How many know the Lord's been good to you? I believe that's the Lord has been very good to me, uh, without a doubt. Every single day, I'm able to open up my eyes, get up out of the beds, amen, to work jobs, amen, earn a living, amen, see my children, come on somebody, get up and just be able to go and experience life, it's a blessing, amen, to be alive and to be well, glory to God. Because so many are not well. So I thank the Lord for that. But our deacons will come uh, this time. I believe Deacon Day is going to help us to lift up our tithes and our offerings, our gifts of love. Amen. Amen. Hold up for a moment, Deacon Harry. I miss my brother right here. He's been out for a while. Brother Jones, amen. Y'all, some of y'all can't see him, but he's sitting over here. Amen. Can we give God praise for him walking? Can we give God praise for him? Amen. I, I don't want to miss him. I know we've been away for, for quite a minute. So we thank God for you being present today and you walking on your own too. Praise the Lord, amen. brother. Amen. God's been good. You are here today. Can we give God praise one more time for you? Thank you. Thank you. You talk about the church. Amen. I say good morning once again. We just come to
Uh, let's see here. I want to read just a few verses of scripture. So a lot I could read, but for the interest of time, I will not read so many. But I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going to take you to verse 10. If you need to sit down, it's okay. We are all one family of faith. Amen? Yeah. All right. Let me start. So they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with the evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained uh, hand and foot. But he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. You may be seated in the presence of our God. God's word is already blessed. And I pray you see the blessing from the mere reading and hearing of God's word on today. I want to preach this for a moment, a simple title, Unhinged. Look at your neighbor and say, Unhinged. Mm -hmm. Bow your heads for me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for uh, giving us this opportunity to be alive today, giving us a chance to come to this house of worship, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, for every person that is here and those that desired to be here but could not make it. We thank you for those that are attending online, Lord, witnessing and watching this service. I pray for your Holy Spirit to touch not only the persons that are present, but those, Lord, that are online. Meet them at the point of their need. Bless them and keep them as well. Help them receive the wisdom of your word right now. We thank you for it, for it's in the strong name of Jesus that we pray. Those who believe that, say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Unhinged. Beloved, can we be honest this morning? Look at your David and say, can we be honest today? Oh, they're real quiet on you. It's like, oh, let me be honest with some sleep. Amen. I, I, I see it in your face. Amen. Come on, watch your name and say, can we be honest this morning? Uh, see, that's what happens when y'all party, oh, amen, on Saturday night. See, I, I feel, amen. Don't let nobody fool you, amen. Hey, I, I feel you. I understand. Amen. Like you, you hang out going to different engagements, all kinds of stuff, and wake up on Sunday morning. Come on, Brother Johnson. It's hard to come to church. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, let's be honest today. There are things that happen in life that make you want to lose your mind. Say amen. See, CNN obtained a video that has gone absolutely viral of Sean P. Diddy Combs, amen, some call him Puff Daddy, depending on what generation you in, amen, he changed his name about four or five times, amen. It had this, this video of him physically assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in a hotel back in March of 2016. It was very clear, leaving no room for doubt that a grown, rich, famous, drunk black man just lost his mind. Somebody say amen. Yeah. You see, brothers, the moment you lay hands on another woman, you have lost emotionally, spiritually, physically, and more than likely, economically. Say amen, brothers. Say, see, my father, get this, told me two famous words. Every person should live by for those times when you feel yourself getting too angry. Walk away. 
Y'all don't even know that, did they, 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 Come on, say it one more time. Walk away. Amen. Because it will cost you if you don't walk away. Amen. Look at today and say, walk away. Walk. Just, just walk away. Amen. You're not losing no street cred. You're not losing any respect. In fact, you got a whole lot of respect if you can keep your cool and walk away. Preach, brother. See, beloved, see, before we judge the ditty too harshly, we have to take a look at our own actions. You see, I don't care if you've been a Christian all of your life. I don't care if you have been the greatest preacher, player, or pimp. Doesn't matter. I don't care if you're a deacon or some say in the old church a heathen. I don't care if you are lost or you are saved by his amazing grace. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote, how many tongues you can speak in. All of us at some point or another will feel like losing it. Amen. I got one amen. See, I, I'm going to tell the truth. Amen. I know you've been saved all your life, but if you're really honest with yourself, you have felt like losing it on somebody. I want to say, anybody here ever felt like just going off? See, it is not that you don't know the law, mm -hmm, but just for one moment, you just wanted to cuss somebody out. Amen. Thank you. Nobody being honest. I'm a priest of folk online. See, have you ever told someone, if you say one more thing, I will put my... Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, have people, beloved, bothered, pestered you, frustrated you so bad where you shouted, y'all going to make me lose my mind up in here. Oh, y'all know it, don't you? Y'all know the rest, do you know it? Eh? Hey, see, I wonder if I'm preaching to some people that know uh, that sometimes you want to put your religion on the shelf and just want to, amen, lay hands on some. I don't mean pray for them either. I'm talking about setting them straight all in the name of the Lord. Am I, I, I preaching to anybody yet? I just want to make sure. Sometimes, though, it's your children. Sometimes it's your husband. Sometimes it's your wife. Sometimes it's your manager. Sometimes it's co-workers. Sometimes it's church folk. You want to lay your hands on See, before it all, you have a nervous breakdown, before you lose control, before you blow up on somebody or hurt yourself, I came to tell you, please do not become unhinged. Yes, yeah, see, it's a conference of our text. We encounter a demon-possessed madman. He is suffering from a full demonic invasion. His spirit was completely breached. I see some of you tweeting and texting me right now, Pastor, what does it mean? What does being unhinged have to do with demon possession? I'm glad you asked. I would suggest that this man was not always demon possessed. Something happened that caused it this, this man to become unhinged. Consequently, he became a madman. Could it be that he lost his job while his boss or other corporate executives uh, of a different color were paid bonuses? Y'all not helping nobody. Could it be that he suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and did not know how to cope with all the pain he experienced? For Proverbs 25 and 28 says, like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. Therefore, when you become unhinged or lose self-control, in essence, you are allowing the devil and his little imps to get into your spirit because your walls, better known as your guards, were not up to keep him out. 
See, in short, when you lose control in fits of rage, malice, behavior, revenge, or violence, the devil gains control. See, when you fly off at the handle, the devil flies into your spirit and handles you. That's why as a child of God, you can no longer say, the devil made me do it because he cannot make you do anything. Amen, somebody. See, no, the moment you knock the hinges off the door of your spirit was the moment you invited the devil to make himself right at home. See, to help keep us from unhinging ourselves or losing our minds, we must understand some preliminary signs for it. First, I'm going to help you. We should carefully observe our environment. Look at your neighbor and say, check out your environment. Yes. See, in verse 2 of the text, Mark said, when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. In verse 3, he said, this man lived in the tombs. The tombs, beloved, were places everyone buried their dead. And with that, beloved, in mind, we could say his surroundings or his environment consisted of dead things. And whenever there are dead things, beloved, there is hopelessness, there is faithlessness, unrighteousness, and you will ultimately find the breeding place for evil spirits. Hear me today, evil spirits love to be in places where there is a hot mess. Somebody say amen. See, I can't believe some of us right now, beloved, are on the brink sometimes of snapping because when we are hanging around, beloved, living with and talking to some people who are physically alive but spiritually dead. Keep amen, prayer, beloved, because there are people in our families, people in our churches, people in our neighborhoods, beloved. They are walking and talking, but on the inside, something has died. But beloved, please get this in your spirit. We have to understand we cannot hang around dead things. Amen. See, if you ever watched a TV program called CSI, you would know that the sole job of a CSI agent crime scene investigator is to find evidence of explaining how a person died. They dust for fingerprints. They perform a blood analysis and a host of other tests to determine the cause of physical death. Now, if they can reveal the physical cause of death, you as a spiritual CSI, Christ seen investigator, should be able to collect sufficient evidence or check out your surroundings in order to determine the cause for the spiritually dead that are around you. See, let me help you. See, if you are living with people that barely have anything nice to say, they are dead. If, you, if your company consists of people who are always negative, always blaming everybody for their personal failures, they're dead. If you are hanging around folk that have no hopes, no dreams, and no joy, they are dead. And anytime you are living in a dead situation, you are subject to go crazy. I wish I was talking to somebody. See, however, beloved, before you become unhinged, I pray the Lord gives you what I call a foreclosure anointing where you can no longer afford the mortgage of their mess, the mortgage of their drama, the mortgage of their pettiness, the mortgage of their jealousy, strife, and depression. Do yourself a favor and pack up your peace, pack up your self-esteem, pack up your friendships, pack up your goals, pack up your dreams, kick rocks, deuces, and get to stepping. See, do what Jesus did.
did after he commanded one of his disciples to follow him, he said that the dead bury the dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. In other words, you have nothing to do with stuff that's dead. Only Jesus can bring a resurrection at his own time. If it's dead, get the second and pray for him while you're leaving. Amen. I'm going to help the second potential sign that comes to fruition. I'm almost done. It's to get this. It's when all restraints come off. Mm. See, Mary kept reiterating from verses 3 to 5 about how nothing could subdue the demon-possessed man. Mark said in verse 4, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons off his feet. No one that included their local police department, fire department, FBI, and even their military special forces were not strong enough to subdue him. Y'all got that? See, that word here, subdue, uh, comes from a Greek word used uh, for taming a wild animal. In other words, this madman was treated like a wild animal animal that desperately needed to be tamed. Can we be honest today? I keep asking that question, but we really got to be honest here. We all know people that act like wild animals sometimes. Y'all quiet, amen. I, I know it for myself, amen. I, I, yes, I do. You see it all, all the time. Just turn on the news. You're going to see somebody acting, as our mama would say, acting like a fool. See, see, since you won't submit any names, beloved, I will help you today. See, all of King Saul's restraints came off uh, when an evil spirit came upon him. Saul was prophesying in his house, and while David was playing the louder, the heart that is, Saul threw a spear right at David. Y'all read y'all Bible? See, he said to himself, if I pin David to the wall, but David ducked and dodged every last one of them. See, beloved, when all of your emotional and spiritual restraints come off, you are without question unhinged. Got quiet there. Reason being, it's no longer you that's doing it, but the enemy within you that's wreaking havoc in your life and the lives of those closest to you. Hear me, child of God. If you do not want the devil to take over your life, then you will have to learn how to keep your alter ego called the Incredible Hawk from coming out. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you got one and I got one. <laughs> yeah, you do. I know you holy. I know you saved. I, I, I know you've been anointed. I know you're gifted. I know you're highly favored. But you got an altar ego on the inside of you. Yes, you do. Hey, hey I'm going to help you. See, you know um, the hawk is about to take control uh, when you feel your blood boiling and you say you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Hey, y'all act like y'all know. See, the hawk is definitely out when you say hawk smash. Cause that's when you start tearing up stuff. Uh, like some folk throw stuff at other people. I'm going to move on. See, that's when you let folk have it. That's when you get even. That's when you give somebody a beat down. And I'm sure that's what Jasmine Crockett felt like doing to Marjorie, uh, amen, Taylor Green after she said during a House Oversight Committee meeting that I think your fake eyelashes are messing up with your reading. Y'all not following. You are to figure it out later. See, they come in on it. <laughs> amen. Preach, brother. Like a she-hawk does not solve any problem, does not heal any wounds, does not mend marriages, and it does not help you to grow into a mature disciple of Jesus Christ. 
preach, bro. See, you need to practice self-control, for it is an aspect of Christian character. That's why Galatians 5 tells us that self-control, y'all remember, don't you, is one of the fruit of the Spirit, which means one clear sign of having the Holy Ghost or the anointing operating in your life is when you exercise self-control or self-discipline. Yes, as my pastor was saying, he said, I can care less about how high you can jump. It's about how straight you can walk when your feet hit the floor. See, but folk can jump straight but walk crooked. You'll get it later. And I know your anointed sing, anointed teacher, and supernaturally gifted, but I want to ask you a question. Can you hold your peace? Oh, can you bite your tongue? Can you be like Jesus who was whipped over 40 times, stripped of his clothes, beaten to a pulp, nailed to an old rugged cross, pierced in his side and hung to bleed and die and still say right up there on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Look at your neighbor and say, don't become unhinged. I'm going to help this last thing finally today, see, is a potential sign of unhinging is when you engage in self-hatred. I wish I could preach it all today. Trust me, but I'm out of time. It's, when you have self-hatred, it's a sign, hear me good, of being unhinged. See, in verse 5, Mark said, night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Here to see as a social outcast, isolated uh, in the community, this madman goes out each night amongst the cemetery and begins to scream because no one loves him. No one cares about him. No one cares whether he lives or dies. So the demons make him think that he is better off dead. So this man begins to cut himself. Did y'all see that psychological makeup in the text? See, beloved, when you engage in self-mutilation, which is self-hatred manifested, it means you do not love yourself. You may not lacerate or cut your body, but you may drink too much. Are y'all quiet right there, right? Uh, amen. That's the everybody here. Start going down. Amen. I fear you may eat too much. You may be narcissistic or hedonistic where your life is built around finding the next pleasure. You may smoke weed. Somebody say puff, puff, pass. And or do drugs because you what? Hate yourself. When you have stopped loving you, you cannot love anyone else. You cannot give what you don't already have. Amen. Can I help you today? I want to encourage you. I know this is a tough teaching, but most of the scriptures where Jesus taught is tough. Amen. Somebody say it's tight, but it's right. See, that's why I had to stop loving yourself uh, by learning how much God loves you. Amen. Praise God. See, as I grow up, beloved, I begin to reflect back over my own upbringing or how much the love of God, the love of Jesus was in my house. Are y'all with me? To talk about him. When well, my father talked about the Lord while he fixed in the car, said, Come on, Jesus, you're gonna have to help me fix this thing. And he would he just begin to talk to the Lord. It just conversation. I'm not talking about super spiritual, all kinds of stuff and crap. No, I'm just talking, talking to the Lord and, and sharing how much the Lord loves me and loves my sibling. My mama just thought him and, and, and singing, singing and humming unto the Lord while she cooking and making the making chicken and getting stuff together, getting everything straight. And it was a love of Jesus that surrounded all in the atmosphere of my home. And now I see how much a great blessing it is because I do the same thing myself. And when I get down, I start singing, I start humming, yeah. And I start preaching about Jesus. 
I'm going to help you here today. That's why it's so important for a family to love the Lord and share that love with family members. I'm going to bless you this way. Get this Kenyan actress, Lupita Nyong'o, who received the 2014 Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in 12 years as a slave, offered this moving reflection on the nature of true beauty. She said, I remember a time when I too felt unbeautiful. I put on the TV and only saw pale skin. I got teased and taunted about my night shaded skin. And my one prayer to God, the miracle worker, was that I would wake up lighter skin. But every day I experience the same disappointment of being just as dark as I had been the day before. I'm going to help you. I, she said, I tried to negotiate with God. I told him I would stop stealing sugar cubes at night if he gave me what I wanted. I would listen to my mother's every word and never lose my school sweater again if he had just made me a little liar. But I guess God was unimpressed with my bargaining chips because he never listened. And when I was a, te a teenager, she said, my self-hatred grew worse. My mother, she said, reminded me often that she thought I was beautiful, but that was no consolation. She's my mother. Of course, she's supposed to think that I am beautiful. And my mother again would say to me, you can't eat beauty. It doesn't feed you. And these words, she said, play and bother me until finally, she said, I realized that beauty was not a thing that I could acquire or consume. It was something I just had to be. And what my mother meant when she said you can't eat beauty was that you can't rely on how you look to sustain you. Oh, bless his name. I, oh, beloved, I, I, I can tell, can I tell y'all something this morning? See, you can rely, though, on something deeper than the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis layers of your skin. It's something, or should I say someone, that lives down in your soul. Something in the crevices of your spirit. I, I'm talking about somebody. I'm talking about the spirit of Christ. I'm talking about the way maker, the mind regulator. I'm, I'm talking about Mary's baby, Harris nightmare. I'm, I'm talking about the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm, I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's heaven's hero who did not risk his life. Rather, he gave up his life as a ransom for all humanity that would believe in him. It's Jesus that hung up on a cross for you. It's Jesus who went to hell for you. It's Jesus that got up out of the grave early Sunday morning. Somebody told him with all power in his hands. It's that, what, it's that one person that gospel artist C.C. Wines would sing unto all of us who would sing and help us to understand that it's got to be Jesus. Because she said, because all my life you've been faithful. Oh yes you have. And all my life you've been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing. Somebody know the song, don't you? I will sing of the goodness of God. In other words, don't be become unhinged because the Lord has been too good to you for you to waste the sacrifice that he made for you. He's been too good for you to waste his anointing on your life. Too good for you to forfeit the joy of your salvation. Too good to waste the spiritual gift or gifts he's given to you. Is there anybody here know that the Lord's been too good to me? Too good 
to lose your peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. For when you know that he's been too good to you, you don't hate yourself, but you love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you don't act like a fool for nobody. For when you know that you're God's child, when you know that you are the apple of his eye, when you know that you are royalty, that you got it pumping in your veins, is there anybody here know that you have divinity stripping out of your spirit? You have resources that will never run dry. You are before he calls you. Your name cannot be forgotten because you are permanently engraved in the you got to let them know how much the Lord loves them. When they think they are not loved. When a person don't love themselves, they don't realize how much the Lord loves them. Amen. Because when you realize how much He loves you, yeah. then you, you'll start turning around and realize I got to love myself too. That's how it works. You can lay down with any psychologist or therapist. They can help you get through some stuff, but spiritually deep within. Yeah. There are some places psychologists can't go. You need to understand where your help comes from and who yeah, made yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. What your purpose, your destiny is. How, how blessed you really are. That's when you start loving you. My, my mama would tell me this. I said, Mama, you know you, you live by yourself and everything. She said, Son, I'm fine. It's me and Jesus. You may it look like I'm by myself, but I, I got the Lord with me. <laughs> is there anybody here? You, know, you got the Lord with you. Yeah. Wherever you go, he, he is talking with me, he is blessing me. And sometimes you just got to think about it. How great he is in your life. And you realize how much he loves you. If you're here today, beloved, you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray you get one today. If you're online, connect with us. We're going to really get in touch with us because we really want you to have Jesus in your life. How do you do You confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus up from the dead and the Bible said you shall be saved. Get saved today. Get saved today. Please receive him for who he is in your life. If I should come here in person, please come to the altar. Step out and get Jesus in your life. Be saved by his amazing grace. And it is amazing. Why don't you come? Come out let our Christian experience. The Lord said, I want you to be a part of this local branch of Zion and come and be a part of it. Just as every believer needs safety, every believer needs a family to love them, to hold them accountable. Come, my brother, come, my sister, we welcome you. Say,
Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt on today. Help us, Lord, each and every day of our lives, oh Lord, to, to resist the temptation, Lord, to become unhinged, to lose our cool, to flare out in anger, Lord, to, to take our, uh, the things out on people, Lord, our feelings, uh, our fears, our, our grumblings, our complaints. Lord, help us, Lord, to take them to you in prayer. Oh, Lord, to lead them, Lord, at the throne of grace. That whatever it is that's troubling our souls, Lord, that you would bring healing to our souls. You would give us liberty. You would give us uh, that freedom, oh, Lord, to be freed from that infirmity, freed from that kind of spirit. That we can continue to walk by faith and not by sight. To have freedom of worship. Praise unto you, O Lord. Nothing hindering us, nothing holding us back. So help us, Lord, to continue to practice, O Lord, that fruit of the Spirit of self control. Lord, to have control over our emotions, the thoughts that are mine, to take captive of every thought, O Lord, that's not like you. O Lord, help us right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to be better than what we are, to be more, O God, because you call us to be more than conquerors. You call us to be ambassadors. You call us to be light in dark places, to be the soul of the earth. We thank you, Lord, for that right now. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you so much for your healing. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your deliverance over our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Those who believe that, say amen. amen. Come on, say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Let's look to have to be dismissed today. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Lord, somebody clap those hands. God bless you.